Hello and welcome to this first tutorial on CSC Show Control. If you haven't already covered the overview videos just to get an idea of the workspace and the general flow of operations within CSC, that's worth doing. Uh, also, there is a getting started PDF that is installed on your computer when you install CSC for the first time. Those are both worth following. This tutorial will be about creating some very basics in a show design manner. So hopefully you've got some familiarization with the workspace, but if not, hopefully you'll pick it up as we go along. So when we open CSC, this is the first thing that we see in front of us. This is the basic blank workspace that is uh, built into CSC. In front of us, we have, uh, as already described in the overview videos, we can see the cue list, the notepad window, the wave player, the file overview, and the mixer. The wave player is effectively a front end to the 64 built-in playback engines to CSC. They can be controlled here by changing the player number or here just by simply selecting in the wave file window. You can see the player number is changing and we can scroll through all 64. In order to play back an audio event within CSC, the idea is to add an audio media file into one of the players and tell them to play. If you want to then fade that audio event, the idea is to then tell that player simply to fade out. So we'll be looking at a few of those examples as we go along. Uh, using as a base reference for this, we'll assume that we're going to build a very basic play scenario. Um, certainly in the UK, these kind of play designs are usually controlled by a stage manager. We don't have a dedicated sound team working on them. So everything that goes into these play designs needs to be on a button push. Everything from starts, the fades, even controlling the mixing desk to ensure that it's in the correct state. So we'll have a quick look at how CSC can help us get all of that in place. OK, so the first thing we're going to look at is actually adding an audio event. So uh, we want to play a file back, maybe some music, a sound effect. Um, let's have a look at how we will go about adding that into the program. So with our blank workspace ahead, the first thing we need to do is add a queue to actually store the data to. A few different ways we can add a queue. We can either click on the button here, which says add new queue. Uh, we could right click in the queue list. We've got an add queue option there or as described here, control A is the keyboard shortcut. So if I just do that now, you'll see that brings up the add edit queue window and uh, we're just going to create some pre-show music for now. So we'll name this pre-show music and hit enter. So we can now see we've got our first queue. So anything we now add or do in the workspace, with this queue highlighted, it will store it into that queue. So to add some audio, uh, we need to navigate over here to the wave player and we need to actually add that piece of audio to the wave player for this queue. So understanding the concept of the wave player system in CSC is probably the hardest thing to get your head around, but once you've understood it, it makes a bit more sense and it actually makes editing and manipulating the show once programmed a bit easier. So we'll see that as we go along. So you have the 64 different wave players, which are all visible here. And as we said, by clicking on any of these, it will reveal that player in the front end window here. So if I wanted to use player number one to play a file, I can select on player number one. If I hit the load wave file button, it takes me into a Windows Explorer window, of which here I can now pick the piece of audio that I want to use. So for now, I'm going to use pre-show. OK, so I've now been presented with a dialogue saying that this is of a non wave file format. Do I want to convert and import these file types? So the reason for this is that CSC is able to play a lot of different file formats from MP4, MP3, WAV file, etc. Um, when you're playing back, you want the computer to be doing as little as possible. You might have 2,000 people sat in the auditorium. 
you don't want anything to go wrong during the show. So the way we do that is we keep the playback side as light as possible and we use all the processing beforehand. And when you use something like an MP3, this is an encoded audio file. Whereas a WAV file is a stream of ones and zeros that are all ready to be streamed into the, um, into the sound card. So effectively by playing back MP3s, we're having to decode them on the fly in order to get them to a stream of ones and zeros. It's almost like saying you're doing a speech and you're an English speaker, but for some reason you've written your speech, you've stood up at the front of this wedding to do your best man speech, but you've written it in French. And you're having to translate from French to English on the fly and then speak it in English. It, it wouldn't really make sense. You might as well just write it in English in the first place. So this is the same sort of idea here. We're saying that the MP3 is an encoded file. And CSE is saying, look, we can play it, but would you like me to convert it to a WAV file as you're loading it in? It just means that it's then in the correct format because we understand that it's not so easy when you're in a pressured situation. The director's saying, where's that sound? And we need a seagull sound right there. The idea that, oh, we've only got it in MP3. Hold on a minute, director. We've got to load up our audio editor and convert it to WAV file and bring it in. It's not a practical thing. So CSC is saying, would you like me to convert it for you? It does it quickly and you don't have to worry about using another program. Uh, but also we can say no. So for now, I'm going to say no and I'm going to leave it as an MP3. CSC will play it. But there are further options that we'll see in later tutorials to actually then take that show and convert everything into a WAV file that is then prepared for use during production time. So you can see now that I have loaded in my MP3 to the first player. I still have 63 spare players. They're not doing anything at the moment. Uh, I can also preview this file if I was to hit the play button up here and you can see that it has started playing and the wave mixer is showing me that something's happening here. I can skip through the file to listen to bits of it and see what's happening. Uh, or I can also skip through the player using the file overview window that you can see happening here. If I was to select any other player, so player 4, you see that there's nothing showing in here because I'm now listening to player 4 player one continues to play and I can stop from here so I can preview what I'm doing uh, without having to actually run the cues and you'll see that there's a volume control we've got here so when we're playing if we go in we can actually quickly adjust the volume that we want for this particular cue uh, the mixer down here is also now running these faders will work in real time because I have this link button selected does mean I can actually move the fader and it is linked back to the player and the cue list. So any changes I make here, firstly you'll see that it changes in the saved state of the cue list and you'll see that it's also changing the wave player level here. If I was to unlink this, I can now move the faders to different positions but it doesn't write it back into the cue list and this is really useful if you're actually in a production and you need to mix something live, something has changed or one of the sound effects for some reason tonight is too loud or you just need to quickly get in and make changes but you don't want to upset the cue list. You can just grab uh, what's currently happening and change things and this is why it's called a live mixer because it does have a whole effect in real time. Uh, once you've changed something and you actually quite like the new level, if we decide we quite like that, we can also hit the save button, uh, which is here, and you'll see that it has now written those changes back. So we can make changes to the point we like them, and then just make sure we hit save, and it updates it. Or if we have link selected, it saves it in real time. Okay, so that's the first thing we need to know. So we've now looked at adding a queue and adding a WAV file into the show. At any point now, if we were to select this queue and hit go, then we see that the file is now playing at the level that we have preset it into that queue. Excellent. Okay. Uh, I'm going to hit the button up here, which is a stop uh, everything. There is a hierarchy to this button, just in case anyone tries wondering why sometimes it appears not to do anything. 
in situations where you have a remote control button box for CSC, you may end up needing a stop button for everything if you've got audio playing. You might also have a link or a wait happening and you don't want to hit stop and cancel all of that because maybe you've just fired a, a follow-on cue too soon and you want to stop. You can see the countdown timer running and you want to stop. So every time you push the stop button, there is a hierarchy of events. It will If there's a a link happening, it will stop that. If there's a fade happening, it will stop that. And above all, if none of those are happening, it will stop any playback. This will become more apparent the more you use CSE. But if in any doubt, if you need to just stop everything, then generally hitting the stop button three times will cause that stop to happen. Uh, the other thing, I do have my cue list here in expanded view. So I am seeing everything that I'm adding to the queue. You'll see that the words Wave 1 pre-show have appeared under here. If you can't see that, you just need to click the description button just to open it up into expanded view. So just to recap so far, we have added our first queue and we've used the load wave file to play a button to load in a piece of audio. We can repeat that on a second player. We could select player two and we can click the open button and uh, let's say that we want to use this dog barking. Uh, we can test the dog barking and there it is. Turn up a bit. There's a dog. So player one still has the pre-show music and player two has the dog barking. If we want to play all of that together we can highlight the cue we want to play and fire the cue. There's many different ways of firing cues in CSC. Um, for the tutorials we're doing now, we're simply using the go button up here. So highlight the cue you want and press the go button. But if you look through the cue menu, you'll see that we can go next cue, we can go selected cue, we can send the current cue. Uh, we can also use spacebar to fire the next cue. It's worth familiarizing yourself with the different manners of which to fire a cue. They all have different purposes for different use cases. Maybe for a stage manager, they want to simply click and fire. Uh, but when you're in the design stage, you might actually want the highlighted cue to be the one that's currently playing. Whereas later down the line, you might want the highlighted cue to be the one that you're about to play. So if we now fire this cue, we'll see that we've got the dog barking and the pre-show both running together and we can see the mixer is displaying both of those results. Just while we're on this matter, the third, um, or sorry, the, the second actually way of adding files uh, is in this manner. If I wanted to add this, uh, what have we got? Uh, this door knock uh, sound onto a, a player. I have another couple of options. I can either use the open file button here as we have been doing, uh, or I can actually drag it straight onto a player and you'll see that we have the file there. Uh, or the other option is actually to drag it onto the queue list. So the doorbell buzzer, if I drag that onto that queue, you'll see that it just adds it onto the fourth player. If I was to take that same doorbell and just drag it into a new queue, and as you'll see the line is now at the bottom here, then it actually automatically creates a queue and adds the file to the player for us. So that's our first tutorial, is simply adding cues and adding files to those cues. Uh, we've seen a little bit about setting levels. So in our second tutorial, we will carry on and start manipulating these files.